Hello everybody and welcome back to my Country Sparkles channel. I am Rachel and today I'm going to be showing you how to make freeze dried hash browns. The first step in working with any produce is to wash your produce. So let's get these potatoes over to our sink and get them all rinsed off and ready for hash brown making. Before I forget, I wanted to tell you what kind of potatoes I will be using today. You have your basic rus russet potatoes that were grown here in Idaho and then Huckleberry Gold Idaho potatoes. I buy them from a local farmer here. Okay, here we have our potatoes moved over to our sink and all I'm gonna do is use warm water to rinse them off. I have a little produce scrubby here just to get all the dirt off. Rinse them and then just transfer them over to a towel and let to dry off a little bit while you finish washing all your potatoes off. Once you have your potatoes all washed, then I just lay them out on towels, mostly to not get my kitchen all wet. Um, come over to your oven, turn it on. Now we're gonna bake our potatoes. I bake them at 350. Um, for about an hour and a half or until I can puncture them with a fork easily without, with a little bit of resistance, but not too much because I don't want them over baked. Just enough so they're not hard going into being processed. The next step is to grab yourself a fork and then a potato and just stab it everywhere. Get all your stabbing out. I don't think you need the sound effects, but you got them. So you just stab it everywhere with a fork and then I line them up into my oven. And that is all for the baking. So you wash, rinse, stab, and bake. Step one for making hash browns. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes. So let's check our potatoes, see where they're at. Okay, so I'm just gonna poke some of the bigger ones with a fork in. Good. There might be just, oops, a touch softer than I'd like. They're pretty good. They've got a little bit of resistance, but not too much. So they're perfect and they are gonna come out. Here are all my potatoes taken out of the oven. I just put them on the counter to cool off some and then once they're cooled, I'll put them in the fridge to get them really cold. And then, I, cause I like to shred them best when they're cold. I feel like they stay together best like that. So along with baking potatoes for freeze drying, I also wanted to try some potatoes blanched and turned into the hash browns to see how the texture differed between baking and blanching. I've got my KitchenAid here, so let's do some shredding. So I have put in this, the shredder blade, and I've got it on faced up to the biggest shredding pieces. I don't need it super fine. And I've got raw potatoes here. So, let's connect that. Here we go, I forgot a cutting board and a knife to cut my potatoes down because they don't all fit right here in the hole to shove them down and get them shredded. I've also got water boiling here in the background because as soon as they're shredded, I wanna put them in the water to blanch them to keep them preserved from turning the gray brown color like potatoes do after they've been sitting out for a while. So just to preserve the look of the potato pretty much. So let's get chopping. Just like that. And I'm gonna toss them in the water to blanch for just a couple seconds. Like I said, to preserve the look, the color of the potato. And the water's already boiling. So when you're blanching food, you boil the water and then you put the food in for just a couple seconds in this case because it's super fine. And then if it's thicker food, then I will put it in for a couple minutes. This only needs a couple seconds. So after blanching, you actually want to put your hash browns straight into an ice bath. I forgot that at first, so I just added water and ice to my hash browns and that will stop the cooking process so that that way your hash browns don't get all mushy 
and then they're easier to freeze dry and they won't fall apart. After your potatoes have baked and cooled, I like to cool mine in the fridge to make sure they're nice and cool even in the center, then it is time to shred them up and get them ready to be hash browned. I have my Bosch here with a shredding attachment and I'll just show you how that works really quick and then I'll shred up a whole bunch. All you do to shred the potatoes is you put, make sure you have the lid on, the shredding attachment in, here's the shredding disc. That's what it looks like. It's got lots of little holes, shredding spots in it, so it works out very well. I like to have a cutting board and knife on hand, so that way when the potatoes are too big to fit in the hole, I can cut them up on hand. I'm gonna just set it to two and let it go. And I shred them with the skins on and everything, and the skins will either stay on top in the machine or they'll get shredded up with the rest of the potato. Okay, now let me show you what it looks like, all shredded. So the top here, you see some of the um, peels are still there on the top. And there's the shredded baked potato. After shredding your potatoes into hash browns, let's get to freeze drying them. All you need to do next, it's super easy. I've got my shredded hash browns here, and then I've got my blanched hash brown potatoes over here. Just take your freeze drying drays and you pour the hash browns out onto them. You can take your spoon and spoon it out if you'd like, but pouring it out is fine. I'll fill it up about halfway to almost all the way. Just like that. So that's my baked potatoes. And then I've got my blanched potatoes here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna pour it out onto my freeze drying trays. Like, do you see how the color is still very nice? It's not browned at all. After blanching, they are preserved very well in color stature. So there it is. As you can see, let me show you baked and blanched side by side. So there's my baked potatoes shredded. They're a little bit finer. And my blanched potatoes, because they were raw and very solid, have definitely more crisp edges to them. So those are my two trays. I'm going to be freeze drying. Once you've loaded your trays with food, bring them on down to your freeze drying machine to load them in. After loading your trays that are full of food into your machine, put on the door pad, or in the door pad, I guess. I like to pull it out. Pull out the ring just a little bit to make sure it's gonna have a nice tight seal when you shut the door. Not a lot, just a touch to ensure a good seal. And shut your door. On my machine, I have put a handy dandy checklist here of vinyl um, that is available on my Etsy shop. The link is in the description below. Check it out if you are interested in one of those. So as you can see, I've already put the pad in. I've already done the ring, pulled the ring out. I still need to close the drain valve. So the drain valve's over here. As you can see, the knob is in line with the valve, which means it's open. And when I make it an L, then it's closed off. So that's done. And then I need to check the oil level over here. I just oil level, it's really easy. They make it easy to line up the oil. And we are ready to start the machine up. All I do is turn it on. There it is. Uh, my machine might be a little bit different than yours. I have knobs on the side. There are many machines with touch screens. Now let's just sit back and wait for the food to be done. Here is a look at the potato hash browns right after they come out of the freeze dryer. So these ones are raw, blanched, and then shredded. And these ones were baked and then shredded. And so you can see the difference. A little bit of difference, they're very airy and light. 
They both feel pretty similar. I think the um, baked ones are definitely more easily um, crumbly compared to the blanched ones. I will put these into a bowl with some water to reconstitute and I will show you that process next. It's been a few days since my freeze dried hash browns got done and I want to show you what they look like compared to side by side. So I have the baked ones and the blanched ones. So first here's the baked. They are, they look really good. They're a little bit smaller pieces. The, oh, they turned out smaller because the um, skin got caught in some of the little blade holes and I just had to peel those out, but they turned out really nice. They're very soft and fluffy. They're like a cloud. And then got my blanched ones here. These are also nice and fluffy, but they're more uniform and in a little bit longer pieces because the raw potato before I blanched it, um, shredded up very nicely and wasn't quite as clumpy as the, or smaller pieces and a little clumpy like the baked potato was. Next I want to show you how the baked freeze dried hash browns compare with the blanched freeze dried hash browns after they've been reconstituted. So I've got me some hot water here from the sink and I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. When reconstituting freeze dried stuff you don't want to douse it in water otherwise it could make it all soupy. So I'm just adding a little bit. I'm going to stir it around, let it absorb the water and add a little bit more until it is reconstituted. Unless you know like what the exact measurements of moisture that you need in there will be, which I don't. I just kind of experiment, do a little bit at a time while I let it reconstitute. So these are the baked potatoes that I'm reconstituting right now and we will see if after reconstituting them if they kind of keep their shape or if they turn into mashed potatoes. We will see. I'm just mixing them up. So I just know I need to add more water when there's pretty much no more water or not even much moisture at the bottom. There's still a couple pieces here that don't have hardly any water in them and but there's most of them um, have been softened and so I'm and there's not much water left at the bottom if any and I'm just gonna let those sit for a minute while I reconstitute the blanched ones I don't want to squish them and make them into little pieces. I just want to want them to kind of keep their shape so I can make yummy breakfast hash browns. Maybe I'll turn them into a breakfast burrito or something for dinner. So the blanched ones aren't absorbing the water quite, quite as fast, which is okay. I think that will help them keep their shape a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water and let them sit for a second longer. Okay. Those ones have stopped absorbing water and there's a little itty bitsy layer at the bottom. I'm gonna let that all absorb together and go back to these. Here we go. Okay, so these look nice and reconstituted. Now these aren't cooked or anything. The best way to do it, it would be to fry it up on a frying pan. But I'm just gonna try them right here and tell you what I think. Pretty good. They definitely don't keep their shape as well. They taste like a baked potato. Um, it tastes like, um, what's it called, mashed potatoes. It's pretty much the texture I'm getting. They are mushing together. Well, I will show you that. So it definitely would um, be super good with gravy or something, but I don't think that baked potatoes freeze-dried into to make hash browns or shredded to make hash browns in the freeze-dried reconstitute back into hash browns very well. I think they definitely reconstitute back into mashed potatoes a bit better. Let me show you what they look like texture-wise. So 
to that more of a mashed potato instead of the individual shredded potato look. Okay, so now let's go on to the blanched potatoes. These ones seem to have kept their shape really well. And I'll try these raw, but uh, for sure I want to fry these up with a little bit of oil in a frying pan, you know, just to get that nice crisp, um, crisping flavor and texture of it. Like, I like an edge browns. Those are nice. And they've kept their shape really well. Let me show you what they look like. Okay, here they are. So you can see they look like hash browns. They've cut their shape. They haven't turned into mashed potatoes or anything like that. So that is great and they look great. And I think fried up in a pan, a little bit of oil will make them the perfect hash browns. Okay, so when freeze drying hash browns, I would definitely say blanch them. So take the potato, uh, shred it up raw and then blanch it and then put it in the freeze dryer. When I baked the potato first and then shredded it, and then put it in the freeze dryer. When they were reconstituted, they ended up being more of a mashed potato consistency instead of a hash brown consistency. So there's my little hash brown experiment for you guys. I hope it helped you out. I hoped you learned a bunch and now you know what to do when freeze drying hash browns. Uh, thanks for watching my video and we will see you next time. And don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Bye.